Hello friends and welcome to Ha Moody's and Maryuma's wonderful channel. Today we're gonna read part four. Uh, we're gonna do part four for reading Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Roger Cr Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Roger Rules. Today we're gonna read. Uh, we're gonna do part four for this reading. Uh, I hope you will enjoy the last videos in the second channel for the Lego uh, for the Lego set number four two zero six eight. And today I'm gonna do on a, on the main channel uh, part for reading the other one because as you see, and of course let's start reading. Uh, in the last uh, reading we were on page forty five, now I'm forty six. Let's start reading. Reading. Here we go. Raoul came over today to play video games, and he ended up sitting on it. I'm actually kind of relieved. Uh, he sit, he sat on this tin foil tin foil ball thing. Well, I was half right, and then Raul came over today to play video games, and he ended up sitting on it. And he ended up ended up sitting on it. I'm actually kind of relieved, to be honest with you. I lost track of that thing a couple of days ago, and I'm just glad it finally turned up. And in all the commotion, I threw Manny's gift in the garbage. But something tells me Mum wouldn't have stopped me this time. Wednesday. Roderick has an English paper due tomorrow, and Mum's actually making him do it his, himself for once. Roderick doesn't know how to type, so he usually writes his papers out on notebook paper and then hands them off to Dad. Really? He's a teenager and he doesn't know how to write? Impossible, of course. But but when Dad reads over Roderick's work, he finds all sorts of factual factual errors. Well, for starters, Abraham Abraham Lincoln didn't write to kill a mockingbird. Roderick doesn't really care about the mistakes, so he tells Dad to just go ahead and type the paper like it is. But Dad can't stand typing a paper with errors in it, so he just rewrites Roderick's paper from scratch. And then a couple of days later, Roderick brings his graded paper home and acts like he did it himself. Page 48. This has been going on for a few years, and I guess Mom decided she's going to put an end to it. So, sh so tonight she told Dad that Roderick was was going to have to do his own work this time round, and that Dad wasn't allowed to help out. Roger went on the computer room after dinner, and you could hear him typing about one letter a minute. Oh my god. I could tell the sound of Roger's typing was driving Dad totally bananas. On top of that, Roger would come out of the computer room every ten minutes and ask Dad some dumb question. Where's the space bar again? After a couple of hours, Dad finally cracked. Dad waited for Mom to go to bed, and then he typed Roderick's whole paper for him. So I guess the, that this means Roderick's system is safe, at least for now. I have a book report due tomorrow, but I'm really not sweating it. I found the secret to doing book reports a long time ago. I've been milking the same book for the pa past five years. Sherlock Sammy does it again. Page 50. There are about 20 short stories in Sherlock Sammy Does It Again, but I just treat each story like it's a whole book, and the teacher never notices. These Sherlock Sammy stories are all the same. Some gr all the same. Some grown up commits a crime, and then Sherlock Sammy figures it out and makes the person look stupid. Your first mistake, Mr. Beasley was when you forgot to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit, geek. I'm kind of an expert at writing book reports by now. All you have to do is write exactly what the teacher wants to hear, and you're all set. Man, Sherlock Sammy is so smart, and I'll bet that's cause he reads so many books. I'll let you write. There were a bunch of hard words in this book, but I looked them up in the dictionary, so now I know what they mean. I guess you're a bit of a... What? I don't know. Let's just go. Page 52. October. Monday. 
There was a kid named Chirag Gupta who was one of my friends last year, but he moved away in June. His family had a big going away party and the whole neighborhood came, but I guess Chirag's family must have changed their mind because today Chirag was back in school. Everyone was happy to see Chirag again, but a couple of us decided to have a little fun with him before officially welcoming him back. So we basically pretend that he was still gone. Boy, I sure do miss Chirag. Yeah, I wonder how he's doing. Hey guys, I'm right here. I have to admit, it was pretty funny. Did you just hear something? Uh, nope. Must have been the wind. At lunch, Chirag sat next to me. I had an extra chocolate chip cookie in my lunch bag, and I made a big deal about it. About it. I wish Chirag was here. Oh, how we love chocolate chip cookies. But I'm sitting right next to you. I'm not even that hungry. 54. Page 54. Okay, so maybe that one was a little cruel. Cruel. Sorry. Gobble, gobble, snack, snack, smack, smack. I guess we'll probably let Chirag off the hook tomorrow, but then again, this invisible Chirag thing could turn into the next P.U. Tuesday. Okay, so the invisible Chirag joke is still going, and the whole class is on it, is on, is in on it now. I don't want to get too far ahead, too far ahead of myself or anything, but I think I might have class clown in the back for for dreaming this one up. In science, the teacher asked me to count the number of kids in the classroom so she'd know how many pairs of safety goggles to get out of the closet. So, I made a big show of counting everyone in the room except Chirag. 33, 34. There are 34 people in this class. Well, that really set Chirag off. He got up and started yelling, and it was really hard to stare straight ahead and act like he wasn't there. I am a human being, too! Page 56. I wanted to tell him that we never said he wasn't a human being. It's just that he's, he's an invisible human being, but I managed to keep my mouth shut. Before you go and say I'm a bad friend for teasing Chirag, let me just say this in my own defense. I'm smaller than about 95%, 100 of the kids of the kids at my school, so when it comes to finding someone I can actually pick on, my options are pretty limited. And, besides, I'm not 100% 100 to blame for dreaming up this idea. Believe it or not, I got the idea for Mom. This one time when I was a kid, I was playing under the kitchen table, and Mom came looking for me. Has anyone seen Gregory? 57. I don't know what made me do it, but I decided to play a joke and Mom stay hidden. Mom went all around, all around the house calling my name. I think she must have finally seen me under the kitchen table, but she still pretended she didn't know where I was. Poor Gregory, all alone in the snow, oh, boo-hoo-hoo. I thought it was pretty funny, and I probably would have stayed hidden under there for a little while more, but Mom finally got me to crack when she said she was going to give my gumball machine to Roderick. Page 58. So if you want to point fingers on the invisible Chirac joke, now you know who's really to blame. Thursday. Well, yesterday, Chirac pretty much gave up on trying to get anyone in our class to talk to him, but today he found our weakness. Rally, do you think I exist? Nope, I can't even hear you or see you. Uh, so how do you listen to him and talk to him if he is not seeing him or listening to him? Oh my god. I forgot all about Rowley. When the joke first started up, I made sure to keep him away from Chirag, because I had a feeling Rowley would blow the jock. But I guess I kind of get got too cocky and let my guard down. Chirag started working on Rowley at lunch, and he came really close to getting him to crack. If you say I exist, this corn dog is yours. I could tell Rowley was about to say something, so I had to act quick. I told everyone there was a floating corn dog hovering hot about our lunch table, and then I picked it plucked it out of the air and ate it in two bites. And the last page. So thanks to my quick thinking, we were able to keep the joke going. Gobble smack. Not as good as the regular kind do. 
But that really made Chirag mad. He started punching my arm, but of course I had to pretend like I didn't notice. And let me tell you, that wasn't so easy to do. Chirag might be small, but that kid can really punch. Is there a flame breathing on me? Because it feels like a tiny little flea is breathing on me. So guys, thank you for watching part four. Here uh, we we finish our reading here. We reached page 61 as you see. Uh, the 10 minutes have been finished. Have finished. So now, thank you guys for watching Diary of Wimpy and Roger Cruels Part 4. And don't forget, if you like the video, click the like button and subscribe for the channel. And, and don't forget to click the bell so all the notifications for this channel come to you. And now, see you in the next part for reading Diary of Wimpy Kid and it's Part 5. And now, goodbye.